All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with you today. Uh, today, we are going to, uh, to read uh, uh, Philemon. And um, Philemon is uh, it's a, a great book that's written um, from Paul. And uh, it's written as a letter to um, a, a brother in Christ who has a slave named Onesimus who ran away and Onesimus became a Christ follower. He, he uh, uh, became a convert to Christianity. And, um, and then Paul, he accompanied me. We just read about him a while back, um, a, few, a, you know, a few days ago, about a week ago. We read about him in, he's mentioned in Colossians, um, Onesimus is. And uh, so, so Paul sends Onesimus back to, uh, to, uh, to Philemon uh, um, and uh, uh, gives him instructions to to you know with this letter to make sure that um, uh, Philemon treats Onesimus as a brother and uh, um, not just as a runaway slave. So it's kind of one of these very interesting dynamics that we find here um, at work and at play as a uh, you know as, as now a, a, a master of an indentured servant or a, a slave is um, who is a Christian. Um, who has now a Christian brother in Christ who is actually, um, you know, a, a servant or a slave. And, you know, so let's read it and, you know, let's see what Paul has to say to, uh, to Philemon. He says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Aphia, our sister and Archippus, our fellow soldier and to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent <clears throat> so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe, that you owe me your very self, I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one more thing. Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. All right, this this really is an amazing, amazing book, isn't it? Um, and so he sends him back and he says, he says to him, he says, Onesimus, you know, you could treat him harshly, but I'm asking you to treat Onesimus as a brother. It was here in chains that that uh, that I met him and I led him to Christ and um, and I'm sending him back to you as a different man, not just as a slave, but now as a brother. 
and he says, I want you to forgive him, you know, anything that he has done wrong, look what he says. If he's done any wrong or he owes anything, he says, charge it to me. Charge it to me. He says, I, I'm writing this with my own hand. I'll pay it back. I'll take his debt and I'll take care of it. I'll pay it back. He says, but not to mention the fact that you owe me really your very life yourself. And so, so man, what an incredible, I think if anything in this entire book, um, you know, to me, that's what stands out to me is, um, you know, what an incredible, um, you know, measure of grace that Paul has given and asking, you know, Philemon uh, to, uh, to, you know, to offer to Onesimus, a brother in Christ. And uh, so just this really amazing, um, you know, extension of grace that Paul is asking for. And I think that we can all really be challenged by in our own lives um, and how we treat other people who maybe are indebted to us. And, uh, you know, it goes back to even what, you know, we, we read in Colossians where he, you know, talks, uh, Paul, as he wrote to the church in Colossae, he told people, you know, forgive, forgive others as Christ has forgiven you. You, you need to forgive other people um, who, have, who have done something against you. And um, that's, that is a, that is a big work, isn't it? especially when, when they've harmed us, when they've done things that were, where we were innocent and uh, they've done things to us. And yet, you know, God tells us that we are to be people who forgive. All right, so let's jump over now to, uh, to the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 78, excuse me, Psalms uh, 85. And um, let's jump in there and, and uh, read, read that Psalm. It says, you Lord, showed favor to your land, you restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. And again, so we just read in um, Philemon, you know, this call to forgive his servant. And here, David is calling out to God and saying, God, how long, you know, how, how long will you continue, you know, to, to, um, to treat us with harshness. He says, you forgave the iniquity of your people and you've covered over their sins before. You set aside your wrath. And so he says, please restore us again. Forgive us, God. Will you not revive us? You know, and then he, he calls out this reality. He says, you, you forgave us, you know, before. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered over all their sins. And so he calls out to that again and says, Lord, and, and he says, I love verse 10 um, in, in this chapter. Love and faithfulness meet together. Love and faithfulness meet together. And look at what he says, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. And uh, faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. And uh, so you're saying the, the, the kiss of God on our lives, right? The, the kiss of God is the righteousness that God brings to us and the peace that God brings to us as we, um, as we live in love and faithfulness, you know, to God. So may God's kiss um, be upon your life today. May God's kiss rest on you and you experience the love and joy of a God who is good. The Lord will indeed give what is good, it says. And our land in response will yield a harvest. That's what happens, we yield a harvest when the goodness of God 
uh, is, is met in our lives. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you, God, for the reminder, Lord, that Lord, the kiss of heaven um, has been granted to us, uh, that uh, righteousness and peace, they meet together. And uh, Lord, may, may your righteousness and peace, God, it uh, just um, you know, permeate our lives and uh, just rest on us today. Thank you, Lord, for each one. Thank you, God, for those who are reading the word with me each and every day. Lord, may your, may your peace rest on their lives, Lord. Uh, may they experience the, uh, the kiss of heaven today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. It was a little shorter one today. So God bless you. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow as we continue reading through, um, which, oh, by the way, another congratulations. You finished another book of the Bible. High five. You finished up the book of Philemon. And uh, we'll jump back in now to, to Second Kings. And so looking forward to that. God bless you. Have a great day.